People get offended when they mistake the subject of a joke with the actual target. Yeah. And they're not necessarily the same thing. You can make jokes about any subject. It depends what the joke is. Yeah. There's no, there's no rules. You can't joke about this. You can. You should you be You just to. can. Yeah. Okay. Um, and there's nothing sacred. Well, that's really. the point. There's nothing sacred. In this heated debate, Ricky Gervais argues that jokes can tackle any topic without offence if intent is clear and that being offended shouldn't hinder comedy or conversation. In a world where saying the wrong thing can get you cancelled faster than you can say woke, Ricky Gervais is the hero we didn't know we needed. Think of him as a comedic surgeon slicing through the nonsense with a scalpel of sarcasm. Get ready to watch Ricky Jazz shred woke culture to pieces and laugh all the way to the bank while doing it. When you go on the Golden Globes, a lot of time you uh, you are politically incorrect and hilarious, of course. Thank you. Uh, so, Thank you. So this is well, yeah. Yeah, well, that, that's the thing about offence, isn't it? When people yeah. say they're offended, it's that, just because you're offended, it doesn't mean you're right, you know? <laughs> it's... Uh, uh, offence is about feelings, and feelings are personal. Some people are offended by equality. So what? You know, mm. so you can't second-guess people. If you try and please everyone, you'll please no one. Mm -hmm. With comedy as well, you've got to, I think you've got to deal with taboos and contentious issues, and sometimes you deal in irony, and some people don't get that, but... You know, you can't legislate against stupidity, otherwise you'll be doing nothing. So, <laughs> if you're saying anything... Let's start with a reality check from Ricky. Just because you're offended doesn't mean you get to shut down the conversation. Offence is like your Aunt Carol's tuna casserole. Some people love it, some people love it, some people hate it, and some are just plain allergic. But Ricky's got a point. If we start banning everything someone might find offensive, we'll be left with nothing but cat videos, and even those might offend the dog people. Ricky Gervais believes humour should challenge boundaries instead of conforming to woke culture sensitivities. Ricky doesn't just walk the line, he pole vaults over it with a cheeky grin. An apology isn't even in his vocabulary. He's got a point. If you're going to make a joke, make it count. While wake culture wants comedians to tiptoe around feelings, Ricky reminds us that humour is about pushing boundaries, not tiptoeing around them like you're sneaking out of a bad date. I stand up, I say, well, you can't say that. You've got to say, you don't find them funny, you know? And I hate it when people say, that joke was offensive. I go, I say, no, you've got to say, you found it offensive. Because it's all about feelings, and feelings are personal. And there's loads of types of comedy, and comedy evolves, you know? There's a new type of comedy at the moment called woke comedy, right? No, it's very progressive, you know? There are some clubs now where the comedian has to sign a thing saying he won't say anything contentious or he won't say anything that, that could offend anyone. It's a safe space for the audience. Woke comedy. And uh, I tried to watch a bit of it, and I decided I'd rather watch Louis C.K. masturbate. <laughs> Can't mention him anymore. He's cancelled. Woke comedy is very progressive, right? Some clubs now even make comedians sign agreements promising they won't say anything remotely contentious or offensive. It's a safe space for the audience. Ricky gave woke comedy a try, so you don't have to. It's like going to a buffet only to find out everything's gluten. Free and tastes like cardboard. Comedy needs an edge, a punchline that makes you think, did he just say that? Woke comedy is like a joke that apologizes before it even gets to the punchline. No wonder Ricky would rather watch Louis Cack. At least he's still throwing punches. Oh, women. Uh. <laughs> Not all women. I, I mean the old-fashioned ones. You know, the old-fashioned women. Oh, God. You know, the ones with wombs. Oh. <laughs> Those fucking dinosaurs. Oh. No, I love the, the new women. I know the new women. They're great, aren't they? The, you know, the new ones we've been seeing lately. The, the ones with beards and cocks. They're as good as... <laughs> they're as good as gold. I love them. No, it's the old-fashioned with it. And now the old-fashioned, they go like, oh, they want to use our toilets. Why shouldn't they use your toilets? For ladies. They are ladies. Look at their pronouns. <laughs> what about this person isn't a lady? Well, his p <laughs> Her p is, you fucking bigot. <laughs> what if he rapes me? What if she rapes you? <laughs> you fucking turf whore. Let's have a look at Ricky Gervais. Hi guys. Ricky G here. Wellness and beauty influencer. As a celebrity, I know all about stuff. Like slams and politics. So trust me when I tell you who you should vote for. If you don't vote the right way, it's like a hate crime.
or makes me sad and angry and I'll leave the country. <laughs> you don't want... Ricky dives headfirst into the deep end of the gender debate and let's just say he's not wearing floaties. He's got a knack for calling out the absurdities that woke culture tries to pass off as normal. It's like watching someone insist that a square peg fits into a round hole. It just doesn't. And no amount of shouting bigot is going to change that. Ricky's humour here is brutal, but hey, sometimes the truth hurts and it's downright hilarious. Ah! Uh -huh. The influencers! Ricky's take on them is like a breath of fresh air if that air was filled with sarcasm and a hefty dose of reality. The idea that someone hawking detox teas and hair gummies on Instagram should be our moral compass is as laughable as it sounds. Ricky pokes fun at the absurdity of a world where the person with the most followers thinks they get to tell us how to live. And if they threaten to leave the country, well, there's the door. As it was, I didn't have to worry about offending anyone because it just happens, so... <laughs> and the big controversy last time I did it was a Caitlyn Jenner joke, right? Oh, outrage on Twitter the next day. And by outrage, I mean a couple of people going, it was transphobic. <laughs> it wasn't transphobic in the slightest. It was a joke about a trans person, but the joke had nothing to do with that aspect of her existence. And that's the other thing about offence. People get offended when they mistake the subject of a joke with the actual target, and they're not necessarily the same. I'll tell you the joke. You make your own minds up, right? So... <laughs> It's live, so they go, and now your host for the 68th Annual Golden Globe Awards. Please welcome Ricky Gervais. They come and they're all clapping, all the actors are looking up, smiling at me nervously. It's brilliant, right? <laughs> so I just go, relax, I'm going to be nice tonight. I've changed. Not as much as Bruce Jenner. <laughs> And I go, now Caitlyn Jenner, of course, and what a year she's had. Became a role model for trans people everywhere, bravely breaking down barriers and destroying stereotypes. She didn't do a lot for women drivers. <laughs> right? so, that's a clever joke, and I'll tell you why, right? <laughs> it's layered. No, listen, right? The subject of that joke is stereotypes. I'm playing with the notion of stereotypes, right? So I start off saying, she's a real woman. Some would say a liberal, progressive attitude. Then I go, oh, if she's a real woman, I hit them with the old-fashioned reactionary stereotypes. She must be a bad driver then, right? And the target of the joke is a celebrity killing someone in their car. <laughs> Let's not forget that, shall we? A celebrity killing someone in their car, running home and popping on a dress. That's the target of the joke, just so we're clear, okay? <laughs> she was interviewed about a week later at some press conference for a show she was launching, now cancelled, and um, <laughs> the press were around and one of them said, what do you think of the Ricky Gervais joke? And she went, maybe I should host the Golden Globes, right? And they tweeted that and they added me in because they want a celebrity feud, you know? It was clickbait, so I rose to the bait, obviously. <laughs> I just sent back, let her host, just don't let her drive. <laughs> Another website that was in the room, Entertainment Weekly, they tweeted a different headline and they added me in as well. And their headline was, Caitlin finally breaks silence over Ricky Gervais. I just sent back, at last, she always breaks too late. Mm. <laughs> Bring it on. Bring it on. But I'm a considered comedian. I like my jokes to be accurate and my targets to be fair. So I was engaging these people. I was saying, why is it transphobic? And they were saying, it's about a trans person. I said, well, that's ridiculous. That's like saying a joke about Bill Cosby is automatically racist. It depends on the joke. But I was talking to them. I'm willing to learn. And I found out my crime was that I dead named her. Now, I'd never heard that term you know, before a day after the Golden Globes, and that was saying her old name, and even acknowledging that she used to be a man. But she did. I... <laughs> I saw him on the Olympic Games. It was... A... It was the Catholic. It was in everything. He was all over the place. It shot put and pole vault. Is... 
he won a medal. He was famous. He was on telly all the time, but, you know, a big, famous man with a huge, I don't know, but I mean, I'm guessing he probably he's a big, but I've learned my lesson. Now, I'd never dead name her now. Now I know it's wrong. I'd never dead name her now. But like years ago, um, when, you know, she was a... This is classic Ricky taking a controversy and flipping it on its head. The Caitlyn and Jenner joke was never about gender. It was about the absurdity of celebrity culture. If you're famous enough, you can do almost anything and still be hailed as a hero. Ricky's not buying it, and neither should we. He's cutting through the noise to remind us that actions have consequences, no matter who you are or what you identify as. Apple, because nothing says woke like a company preaching dignity while paying workers pennies to make your iPhone. Ricky's not letting them off the hook, and we're here for it. It's like watching a magician reveal the trick. It's all smoke and mirrors. And Ricky's the guy pulling back the curtain. Woke culture loves to point fingers, but Ricky's here to remind us that sometimes those fingers are pointing straight at hypocrisy. Talented people of colour were snubbed in major categories. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about that. The Hollywood foreign press are all very, very racist. So, <laughs> fifth time. So, we were going to do an in memoriam this year, but when I saw the list of people that had died, it wasn't diverse enough. It just, no. It was mostly white people, and I thought, nah, not on my watch. So, maybe next year. Let's, let's see what happens. Oh, I was salivating. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Nor that I got an adrenaline rush thinking of, you know, what I could say and whether I'd have to go to jail. And, um, <laughs> no, I, but, I, you know, it's, it's, I like that opportunity because I do like that, you know, when there's a tension, when there's an elephant in the room, Although he wasn't there this year, um, <laughs> no, but um, no, I, I, I do like that because I like I do like confronting that because I think it takes the audience to a place it hasn't been before, mm -hmm. and um, it can be a mutual backslapping, you know, fest. Fine, but don't televise it, you know, because I'm I'm not doing it for the 200 egos in the room. I'm doing it for the 200 million people watching around who, who aren't winning awards, who aren't millionaires. Who... Ricky's got a knack for taking woke culture's obsessions and turning them into punchlines that hit harder than a brick wall. Diversity is important, sure, but when it's applied to things like death, you know, we've gone off the deep end. His humour is like a cold splash of water, refreshing and a little shocking. He's here to remind us that not everything needs to be on a diversity checklist, and sometimes a joke is just a joke. Ricky doesn't just poke the bear, he walks right up to it, slaps it across the face and waits to see what happens. Let's be honest, we love him for it. He's not out to please the Hollywood elite. He's speaking to the rest of us who are tired of being told what to think, what to say, and how to laugh. Ricky's willing to take risks because he knows that the truth wrapped in a joke is still the truth. And if it makes a few people squirm, even better. You call me Bobo, so <laughs> I'm going to have species realignment. I'm halfway there, to be honest. I'm sort of short with short legs and long arms. I sort of stoop like that. My back's getting hairier by the day. I've got fangs. <clears throat> I love nuts. Oh, I love nuts. And once I was at the zoo and I could tell people were looking at me, so I just started masturbating. <laughs> so, I am a chimp, right? I am a chimp, if I say I'm a chimp. And so I've got to live as a chimp for a year, then have hormones, get me all nice and hairy. Like, that'd be lovely, right? I'm going to stay a male chimp so I can keep all that, right? A male heterosexual chimp, keep the same girlfriend. Um, <laughs> Jane will be happy. She loves me. She loves chimps, so, you know. And um, I reckon that's got to be easier for a man to turn into a chimp. We're so close than for a man to turn into a woman in many ways. You know what I mean? A bit of hair and a top lip like that as opposed to your cock and balls ripped off and a hole gouged out into... No, no I'm not a doctor, but that is the gist of it. I know which one I'd rather have done. And I'm not saying I think chimps are better than women. No way. Right? Any ladies here, right? I can't see you, but to me, every single one of you is equal to a chimp. So... And finally, Ricky takes identity politics to its most ridiculous conclusion. Species realignment. It's absurd, it's outrageous, and that's exactly the point. Ricky's humour is like a funhouse mirror, reflecting the ridiculousness of woke culture back at us. If you can identify as anything, why not a chimp? The man's got a point. 
Sometimes the only way to handle the absurd is to laugh at it, and Ricky does just that. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comments section below. I'll catch you guys in the next one.